Okay, so what I want to talk to you about today is a little bit more about exposing to the right. It's a principle that's been around for a long, long time. I mean, most people who used to shoot on um, color transparency, slides, slide film, always had the same sort of motto, if you like, expose for the highlights and let the midtones and shadows look after themselves. And really and truly, it is 999 times out of a thousand, it is the best attitude to have when you expose to a digital camera sensor. Here we've got this raw file, I've done a little bit of processing to it and we're going to end up with an image that looks like this or something akin to this and this raw file was shot just after sunset so we're just getting on towards twilight and so if we go and look at the final image this is highly modified of course it's a little bit leery on the saturation i suppose but some people like the saturation but there is no real doubt as to what time of day it was taken not really and so if we go back to the original raw file and just so as everybody knows um those who are members of my patreon site can actually download uh, these two files in this Lightroom catalog and um, if you are a member of my Patreon site you will be able to download where's it gone where's it gone where's it gone um, yeah Patreon members you'll be able to download this catalog here ET, ETTR underscore one and it will contain these two images here there, there's the um, finished tip Here's the raw file and there's the XMP data. So you'll be able to see all the history, etc, etc. And you can have a play with it to your heart's content. But anyway, um, for everybody else, um, this is the raw file as far as I've taken it. But if you want to see what the raw file actually looks like, high it reset, there it is. You can see how that, it's just gone a little bit tipped down on the right hand side. And yet it was with the camera level turned on. It was absolutely dead level. It's as I've mentioned before. Um, those levels in your camera are not to be trusted. They can be out by some margin. Anyway, we digress. So you can see if you look at the histogram that the highlights are pretty much hard over to the right hand side. Um, if the in-camera histogram we're showing them smack on the right hand side absolutely over here and a little bit more of a peak because you have to remember this is not the histogram the histogram in lightroom is not the histogram of the raw file it's the histogram of the image that lightroom is making out of that raw file so the two are not quite the same but anyway what we're going to do is we're going to process this image inside a Lightroom and then we're going to do things to it in Photoshop which you can't really do in Lightroom you can sort of approximate it but it's it's hard work in Lightroom and it's really easy in uh, the likes of Photoshop so without any further ado because I'm waffling again we'd better get on now the main principle of ETTR is to expose your highlights correctly and the brightest part of this image is obviously the sky and you can see very clearly that even though it's in the adobe color and it's got too much contrast and goodness only knows what else you can still see that the highlights the brightest part of the image is exposed as the brightest part of the shot because don't forget if you meter for the highlights the meter reading you are going to get is actually going to want to expose those highlights as a mid-tone we don't want to be doing that we want to expose highlights as highlights mid-tones as mid-tones and shadows as shadows makes sense of course it does so what are we going to do first off you've got to just say how much of this shadow detail can we actually pull out so if i take the exposure slider up you can see we're we're pulling shadow detail or if you like we are recovering it we're not not really 
but we're just looking at what the sensor has recorded and you can see we can pull we could actually take it all the way up to five stops but now we're getting this purpley uh, and green false color um, which is basically it indicates that yes we have recorded data on the sensor but we're actually trying to recover too much but i will do another thing in inverted commas on dynamic range and real dynamic range for and usable dynamic range uh, at some other point but you can see we've recorded a lot of data but there's not a lot of photons hitting the sensor from these deep shadows here and so we are getting a very very low signal but we're amplifying all the fixed noise on the sensor, the thermal noise, pattern noise, etc. So that's why we are getting these distortions, of, if you like, of colour and noise in these deepest shadows. So we obviously don't want to be doing shadow recovery to that great degree, plus the fact it makes the, looks, well, it makes the rocks look as if they were exposed at midday, not 10 minutes after the sun went down. So we've got to try and keep things realistic. So I'm just going to do a straightforward process version swap just to get the contrast under control. So we've gone to version two, we've re-zeroed, we'll switch back to version four. We'll go to lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration, detail, we'll put the color noise reduction back. Let's change the overall sharpening. Let's bring it down to around about the low 20s we'll take the radius pretty much all the way down to 0 0.5 and we'll take the detail slider up to 100 so now we're using what you might term as single iteration deconvolution sharpening if you want to understand more about that go over to my digital download store and go and buy my premium sharpening training uh, worth every penny so everybody who's bought it seems to say and I'm quite proud of it. But anyway, there's the shameless plug gone. And uh, we won't bother adding any noise reduction. One thing we do want to do is just go to get a rough white balance. So we'll go and pick up the white balance tool. And we'll just come into these darker grey clouds. And we'll just add a white balance sample. 10,000, that's a little bit too much. Needs to be somewhere around upper 800s upper 8000 I should, I should say on the temperature slider and maybe just take a little bit of the magenta out of it as well so now we've got um, contrast under control we've got Lightroom's funny silly little um, background adjustments under control so now we can go and do something to the image and my first port of call always with this sort of work is a graduated filter and so I'm going to hold down the shift key and bring a graduated filter up. And actually, I think before we do that, we'd better go and straighten the image because uh, it is a little bit on the wonk. So we will go to um, crop and we will just try and get that horizon line pretty much level. And I think it's pretty level like that. So we'll go ahead and click done. Now I'll go and get a graduated filter and I'll just bring it up as far as just past the horizon and then we'll go and make some adjustments. We will bring up the exposure and I want to make it a little bit lighter than I want it in the finished image. So I'm just going to bring it up to around about three and a quarter stops and we will take this over to uh, just about there we'll maybe lift it up a little bit just to get a, a, a bit of a better graduation between the skyline and this water here but i do want to take the brightness of this near water here it's an absolutely flat calm sea and uh, no amount of nd filters could get rid of the detail in the water and it, it, it'll never win landscape photographer of the year because the main feature is sort of pointing here in the image and yet the main color effect of the sky is over here on the left hand side so it's a little bit of a 
iffy composition but uh, it does it'll do a good job for illustration now the only thing i want to do is just bring down the highlights so i'm just going to turn the highlights down just a smidge and just maybe do something rather like that just as this water's not too bright um, above the rocks and i think that'll do for there um, I'm going to add another one, another graduated filter to the sky because the sky requires a completely different treatment. And I might actually extend that a little bit in a moment. I'm just going to bring the exposure down on the sky a little tiny bit. I'm going to blue the sky down, if you like. I'm going to add some magenta to bring out those clouds. I'm going to add some saturation to it. I'm also going to add a little tiny bit of clarity, not too much, and a little tiny bit of dehaze. And I think that'll do for there, so we'll go ahead and click done on that. Overall, I might add a little tiny punch of clarity. Let's just take it from Adobe Standard to Camera Neutral again. Um, yeah, that's actually looking a little bit better swap it back to adobe standard yeah you see this there's, there's a little bit too much contrast in the sky um but i'm keep and the rocks are looking a little bit better to me so i think what we'll do is we will scoop two variants over into photoshop first so we'll add this one for the sky so we will go edit in edit in photoshop and there's that version and then we will come back to lightroom and we will swap this out to adobe standard because i'd rather i'd rather have the foreground from this image so we'll right click and we will go edit edit in photoshop and then we'll scoot over to photoshop and there we've got our other version i'm going to grab my move tool and i'm going to take my shot for the foreground I think it's the foreground isn't it yes and we will just drag and hold down the shift key and drop this new version for our foreground and we want to try and keep the foreground as flat as possible because i'm going to do something one or two adjustments inside of photoshop which are just going to make that foreground pop quite a bit so i want the sky from here because don't forget the sky is a lot further away so trying to maintain some semblance of reality in the shot, the further something is away from you, the lower its contrast appears to be. So I want the sky from here, and I want the foreground from there. So simply add a mask, and then we will go and get a graduated fill tool, and we will have that running from black to white, and we want what is it we want from here yeah we want the sky from there so i want to block the sky out from here so we're running from black to white with a graduated fill so we'll just come onto the skyline and we'll just draw hold down the shift key draw a line from there and yeah i'm quite liking that as a good starting point now i don't recommend you do this but i'm just going to go layer flatten image and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to come and put that in the screen blending mode. Now we can see we've actually increased the overall exposure without dialing the pixels up. All we're doing is duplicating the pixels in situ by adding this top layer here, this layer one, and then we're changing the way those pixels blend with the mirror images of themselves in the layer below these are the background layer so i'm going to pull up greg benzie's lumenzia and i only want to add this where the foreground is light so i'm going to go into live mask and i'm going to go for a lights one mask now has that made a great deal of difference so we're going to turn the layer off, turn it back on, 
Yes, it's made a considerable difference. But of course, I don't want it on the sky. Now, if we look at the actual layer mask itself, if I alt click on it, I want to fill this area of the mask with black. Yeah? So, I want to fade across the water. Now, if I use the conventional grad fill, and I say I want to fill from the water, just above the waterline, to the rocks like that. Now, that's totally destroyed the actual layer mask. So if we go edit, undo gradient, and we switch the gradient from a black to white gradient to a black to transparent gradient, and then I can come in here again and just draw that gradient in there, and of course, as you can see now, we've got a completely black top to this mask, which is hiding this exposure increase from the sky, and it's fading it in quite gradually. I'll actually replace that and do it a little bit softer, rather like that. And if I hit the backslash key, you can see what we've done. So if I go and turn that layer off, it looks very flat. Turn that layer on. Now I've brought the foreground forward. So there we go. So I'm just going to temporarily shut Lumenzia down. And we'll go and view the image at 100%. And yeah, everything's looking nice and sharp. And let's come into these shadowy areas here. We're not generating any noise. Are we generating any noise over in the rocks? No. And, you, I mean, when you consider um, where we actually started over in um, Lightroom, and let's go reset, it's quite staggering how much shadow detail we've brought back, but we haven't used any highlight and shadow slider recovery tools. The only thing we've done is just use the exposure slider and a couple of graduated filters and then we're starting to increase the exposure a little bit more through layer masking inside of photoshop so you know i mean there's always a million and one ways of skinning a cat um, some are more effect effective than others and you know the thing is we are doing stuff inside of Photoshop which you just cannot do in Lightroom no matter how hard you try. Now I want to go and build up the saturation. Now obviously this is something we could do in Lightroom um, but we're going to do it over in uh, Photoshop. So I'm going to pull out Greg's um, Lumenzia again and we're going to go for a HSL adjustment and we are going to turn up the saturation i don't want to go too much i'm just watching what's happening in the sky i might turn the lightness of the image down just a tiny tad just a tiny bit and do we need to actually swing the hue at all i think we'll keep that around about minus three because that's just making some of these pinky magentas in these clouds just pop just that little bit more um, are we going to put this on a mask? I think we'll put this on a lights one mask again. And yeah, because if we look at the mask, hold down the Alt key, click on it, that's going to reveal the majority of that saturation in this brighter part of the sky. We're also going to pick some of it up in these slightly disconcerting highlights here and here. So at the backslash key again. And if we turn that adjustment layer off, and turn it back on again you can obviously see the adjustment in the sky and in the water some in places in the rocks here it's very very subtle and you know it's not it certainly won't I, I, I certainly don't expect it to be visible with video compression so anyway what else are we going to do i just think i'm going to do a simple vignette so i can just add a vignette using lumenzia but I might make it just that little bit darker. We'll go ahead and click OK. And I might just stretch the points out just a bit more. 
yeah because i want to just darken these rocks down but i don't want the vignette in the sky again if we have a look at the vignette mask by out clicking on it you can see we've got this oval here now if i go and pick up my graduated fill tool again and again keeping it with black to transparent um let's just minus it so i can get to the top and i will just come down here and draw a straight line by holding the shift key and you can see i'm actually beginning to remove the vignette from the top of the image and you can't do vignette masks like this inside of lightroom so we actually want to do that somewhat more drastically and i'm just going to pull that down to about there and now you can see we've removed all the vignetting from the top of the image we hold down the alt key and click on the vignette mask and so we're only vignetting this part of the image all down the backslash key again and yeah that's not looking too bad i'm just going to make a little levels adjustment so using lumens here again i'll just click on the levels adjustment mask and uh, well the levels adjustment layer and you can see we've dropped a, a levels adjustment layer over the top and i'm just going to darken the shadows a little bit by just pulling that black point in till it's just off the left hand side of the histogram i'm going to pull the whites in a little bit not too much and then i'm going to get contrast under control by just riding the mid-tone slider and i rather like that but i'm only concentrating on this part of the image yeah so i don't actually need one of these masks for this all i need is a normal mask and i'm going to invert that so it's black so i can't see it i'm then going to hit my i might as well switch lumenzia off i'll hit my b key for my brush tool and i'm going to hit x to swap over from black to white with the old brush and i'm just going to reveal some of this lightness levels adjustment that we brought in and i'm just going to reveal it just in the lighter parts of the rocks here and i might just bring it in on the foreground and you can see that's actually darkening the shadows there which you know i mean it'll work all day long now it's a subtle adjustment but if i go and turn it off and turn it back on you can see very easily what's happening and i might just feather that out just a little tiny bit and then i think what i'll do is i'll go file and i'll go save and this will put it back into lightroom and we'll just go and make a couple of tweaks to it inside the lightroom so we'll hop back over and here's our image fresh from photoshop and i might just warm the image up overall make it a little tiny bit of a magenta tint to it which helps portray the twilighty little uh, tints and glows in the clouds and in the highlights i might actually just tweak the highlights down just a little tiny bit we might add a little bit more clarity to it a little bit more vibrance and i might just darken it down just a little bit and just so we get the fact that we are actually shooting at twilight and then maybe i'll get an adjustment brush and just add probably about a third of a stop of exposure and make the brush a little bit bigger and we can come in and just lift some of these areas over here we haven't got auto mask turned on so that's not too bad there and we might actually lift the exposure up just that little bit more there maybe add a touch more clarity touch more dehaze and a touch more saturation and there we go so don't forget this is a single image which has been derived from this raw file as it stands 
a single image exposed to the right using Lightroom and Photoshop to bring out all that lovely shadow detail and we haven't been anywhere near the shadow or highlight recovery sliders so there you go hope that's been interesting and don't forget if you are signed up as a member of my patreon then if you go onto my patreon post site you will see a little blog article featuring this video and in there will be a link where you can go and download the lightroom catalog and the raw file the raw file processing history etc etc and of course the original finished tiff not this one uh, the original one which will give you some sort of a guide as to what you can do and you know once you've got hold of the raw file you've watched the video you've seen how i've processed it as i said there's more than one way of skinning a cat so you can have your very own go at processing said raw file so there you go folks hope you've enjoyed that's been a bit of a long one many apologies but you know mm, i'm quite notorious for producing relatively long videos so uh, until the next time hope you've enjoyed it hope you should click the subscribe button if you've not already subscribed and if you want to get hold of the files you know what to do go and sign up to my patreon yes until the next time to root